What's up guys, welcome to Daily Dose of Reddit. This is your host, Zach, and today's subreddit is r slash tales from the customer. Alright, this story's called, That time a hug got me $1,000 and a rental car upgrade instead of 5 days in a crappy motel. Buckle in, this got long. Several years ago, in the before times, we took a special family vacation. A wealthy family member had just purchased his vacation retirement home in Colorado and invited us to come spend two weeks over 4th of July at the house, along with a few more members of the extended family. Naturally, we jumped all over it. It was April at this point, so flights would be relatively cheap. Zero cost for lodging, this is going to be amazing. There was just one problem. I was a week into a new job when the offer came, and would be wrapping up my 90-day probation period technically a few days into the trip. So after a quick talk with the higher-ups, I had my significant other book just her and our son. I was tentatively promised something, but they couldn't guarantee how much or exactly what dates they could give me that far out, as I technically hadn't earned any paid time off yet, my role was new, etc. A little over a week before the trip, I got called into the vice president's office with my direct manager and HR present. Uh-oh. This was two weeks before my 90 days. This can't be good. Turns out, I'd crushed my numbers and would have qualified for a pretty nice bonus had I been eligible to receive it. They gave me an extra five days paid time off and let me take the two weeks for the vacation instead. Sweet. I booked the cheapest flight available on Apparition, with a five-hour layover in Vegas going out and a direct flight home the morning after the rest of the family was scheduled to leave. So I'd have a night to myself in Denver. <clears throat> That's my shrug noise. It cost $1,000 $50 and was hundreds cheaper than any other option. Another $150 for the shuttle from Denver and I'm $1,200 all in. Fine, I'm getting more than half of it back with my extra paid time off. The first leg of the flight was fine, I guess. The AC quit about 30 minutes into the flight, but otherwise, it was pretty standard. I'd called a favorite former client of mine who lived in Vegas, and we were to have lunch and drinks during my downtime. It's gonna be a good day. As I'm waiting for my plane to come in, an absolute monsoon hits in Vegas. I'm serious. In 30 minutes, this little storm dumped over a third of the average annual rainfall on the airport. This caused my notoriously cheap airline to divert the incoming flight to Reno, canceling my flight to Denver. Crap. After making my way to baggage claim, I get in line to figure out what happens now. The line moves slowly and the people walking away from the counter do not look happy. Two hours later, it's my turn. I'm told that the earliest flight is five days away, and there's nothing they can do. That poor clerk was done with everyone's crap and was in no mood to go out of her way for anyone at that point. Despite my being very polite, though the veil hiding how upset I was had to be pretty damn thin. She offered me a $150-ish refund for that leg of the flight or the rebook in five days. She said she couldn't get me within 500 miles of Denver any sooner and was unable to book me leaving from Reno. I had to fly out of Vegas. Being stranded both a thousand miles from home and where I was supposed to be didn't move the needle. She did did offer me a 20% off coupon for a crappy motel though, so that's something. I took the rebook and made some calls, canceling my shuttle to the ski town, letting the family know, giving the corporate customer service number a call to see if we couldn't get creative, we couldn't, etc. Eventually, I decided to just book a car and drive through the night, so I got back in line. Another 90 minutes go by and there's been a shift change. The new clerk is wearing out fast. People are pissed and are just unloading on these poor clerks. Finally, it's my turn again, and I see my clerk's customer service face fall away for a moment, revealing sullen, emotional fatigue and dying eyes before taking a breath and bring back all the sparkle with her smile as she calls me up. I stop a few feet away from the counter and spread my arms, saying, Come on, I know you need it. Bring it in for the good stuff. 
That's a little weird. Which elicited a full-blown guffaw until she saw I was serious. She hopped over the baggage scale and gave me a massive hug that lingered a little bit too long. She needed that, and it visibly recharged her batteries quite a bit. I filled her in on what had transpired so far, my rental car solution, and let her know that unless she had some creative solution that I hadn't thought of, I just needed to cancel my rebooked flight. After spending a minute looking around in the system, she frowned and told me the earliest she could get me to Denver would be three days, which doesn't really help. I thanked her and asked for her to just cancel. Just then. Her whole body lights up and she asks if I mind waiting while she tries something. No, of course I don't mind. Try away. As she's tinkering, she casually asked who I'd booked my car through and gets even more excited as she says with a wink, I've got something for you. Hold on. She picks up the phone and holds it with her shoulder as she's furiously typing away on the computer. Hey, John, it's Kara. Alex there? I've got something for him. Great, yeah. Alex, I got a guy for you. Yeah, good dude. He'll ask for you and drop my name. 20 to 30 minutes, I'd imagine. Outstanding. Thank you. See you tonight. Then she smiles and spins her screen to show me my refund. $998. What? How? She'd spent all that time finding the single most expensive one-way flight in the country, booked me on that, and then refunded it. I was blown away. I gave her another hug and went to go see Alex at the rental desk. I booked a $21 one-way Yaris or similar. I know, stupid cheap, right? When I get to the counter, I say, Hi, uh, Kara told me to ask for Alex. Alex, is he around? Dude enthusiastically calls me over to another computer, gives me an even more enthusiastic handshake, and immediately apologized for needing a minute to pull everything up and get it sorted. Nah, man, it's cool. I'm not sure exactly what's happening, but take your time. I'm sure the wait'll be worth it. He asks how I know Kara, so I tell him about the flight being cancelled. He nods knowingly and tell him I gave her a hug before we started talking about business. He grinned at me and said, Thanks, man. She needed that, I'm sure. Give me another minute. Remember how I'd spent $1,050 on my flight, gotten $998 back, and paid $21 for the tiniest sedan in the States? Dude put me in a Buick and threw in a satellite radio. Say what you want about the brand, how they handle like a bathtub on wheels and miss the mark on legit luxury, but the seats are comfy as frog juice, and it's a dream on the highway. I don't know, man. Sounds kind of dangerous to be driving while sleeping, but you do you, buddy. <laughs> sure, I drove through the gorgeous country in the dead of night, so I saw precisely none of it, and... I drank so many Red Bulls that my pee turned a shade of green that I was afraid to turn out the light before flushing for fear that it would glow in the dark. But the drive was downright pleasant, thanks to Kara's call. The trip was fantastic. We hiked, we fished, we sat outside and looked at the mountains. We did some other stuff too, but those were the really good bits. The flight back was great. Cold AC and the credit card swipey thing crapped out towards the end of the flight so my booze was free. So my $1,200 round trip ended up costing me less than $200 after another day of a rental car and a cheap motel on the back end. All because I gave a clerk at the service desk a hug. Edit. Wow, y'all are too much. Many, many thanks for all the awards and kind words. I'm glad I was able to brighten your day. Kindness isn't very hard, and a little clearly goes a long way. Thanks again for all the love. Hugs to all of you. You know what, man? I'm so glad it worked out in the end because <laughs> it takes balls to just offer a random lady a hug because there are many ways that could go. <laughs> but obviously, he had good intentions with the hug and wasn't being creepy, so that's a good thing. Uh, and she needed it. So, again, amazing thing. Lots of good things at work here. It's like a... Uh, uh, like a thing that's got lots of things in it that work well together. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I'm really good with words. 
All right, this story's called Staff Verbally Assaults Me When I Come Back to Pay for an Item That Hadn't Scanned on Self Checkout. Last weekend, I went shopping in a British store that sells the majority of its products for a specific amount. <laughs> is that like a Dollar Tree sort of situation? <laughs> the checkout setup in this store is that there are two tills with staff and several self checkout terminals where you scan your items, place them on a weight sensitive area in your bag, and then pay for them. After queuing for about 10 minutes to pay, neither of the human tills were free, so I used their terrible self-checkout machine. As the store was so busy, I just carried my items and receipt outside in my arms rather than packing them into my rucksack and hogging them in a terminal. When I got outside, I realized a pack of chocolate bars hadn't scanned. Not the first time this has happened with their machines, but I usually notice before paying, so I scan the missing item again. So it wasn't on my receipt and I hadn't paid for it. I went back in to speak with a member of staff and pay for the item. I'm an honest bloke, and while it wasn't much money, I'd like to pay for the items I'm taking away from the store. Unfortunately, there's no separate customer service area in these stores, so standard practice is to speak to a member of staff near the doors. If there is one, there wasn't, or wait for a human on a till to finish with their current customer, then briefly speak to them about it. They either summon a manager to deal with it, or quickly ring the item through themselves, and the whole process takes less than a minute. The staff member I tried to speak to was rude when I tried to explain and wouldn't listen and just told me repeatedly to go and queue. I asked to speak to his manager. She came in and did briefly listen, but then also rudely told me to go to the back of a very long queue. No mention of the way her employee spoke to me. The original staff member continued to have a go at me, as did the next customer in queue encouraged by the staff member who was saying things like, This guy stealing your place in a queue. Are you gonna take that? I don't know why I bothered going back and trying to do the right thing when I could have had the item for free and not been harassed by two members of staff and another customer. Inexcusable poor service and bad business too. I was beyond angry at how I was treated and ended up leaving without the item at all. I contacted their customer support after leaving the store and let them know about the incident. Understandably, they weren't too happy as this kind of issue happens often, and they don't want to be encouraging customers to just not pay for the items. You know what you should have done? You should have been a badass and just been like, you know what? Rip open the candy bar, take a huge ass bite, and then like leave a, a five pound note or something. You know, something that's more than the worth of the candy bar by a little bit, so that you can be like, you know, I don't care. You're, I'm paying extra just to get the hell out of this situation and away from your ugly stanky breath and you just turn around and well obviously you don't say that you just let your actions do the talking because otherwise it's not as badass so you just throw it down you turn around you walk away and you eat that goddamn candy bar because you deserve it unless you haven't been eating well or exercising in which case go do that i'm just kidding go ham on that damn candy bar uh, the story's called, Hope Her General Manager is Happy. Very considerate of you. I'll try to keep this brief. Like my boxers. And let me preface this with having worked in retail and customer service before I try to be nice and understanding when dealing with folks working such roles. And I generally avoid ever escalating things unless I am specifically asked to by the customer service rep, as I was in the following story. As I don't want to bring any additional stress to what I know is already a stressful gig on even the best days. Anyhow, today I ordered lunch for my girlfriend and I from OG Italian Chain via a delivery app. She really loves the house salad there and likes to get a second cup of dressing for the salad. So I put in the order and put in the special instruction section for the salad. I added, please include extra pepperoncinis and an extra salad dressing, thank you. <laughs> when the order arrives, every Everything is good, except there is only one to-go cup of the dressing. <gasps> no! Not wanting to make real waves over a to-go cup of dressing, but also wanting to avoid this in the future, 
As this restaurant has had real issues following the special instructions and many of our orders of the same salad, I called the restaurant to ask if there was some different way I should write the note to avoid this in the future. I get passed around to three different people before I finally end up at the person who is presumably in charge of the online order fulfillment. I try politely explaining the issue, but she cuts me short and says they added the extra pepperoncinis. I ask about the additional dressing and she tells me that the special notes are sometimes cut off in the app and I should complain to the delivery app about it and then hangs up on me. So I do as I'm told. I open the app to register I had a problem with the order, something I was trying to avoid as I didn't want the restaurant or staff to have to deal with whatever fallout comes from a customer complaint in the delivery app. I go through the prompts and say it was an issue with special instructions not being followed. The delivery app automatically re funds me for the entire order. I just wanted to know how to avoid this issue in the future and ended up getting a free lunch instead, thanks to a missing complimentary cup of salad dressing and someone at OG Italian chain too busy or important or whatever to deal with a polite and calm customer who is trying to avoid looping the delivery app into it. Mm -hmm. huh. What? You can get they refund the entire order if they screw if they screw it up? What? Do you know how many hundreds of dollars I could have gotten back from screwed up orders? Like it's embarrassing how much I, I order food from like Favor or Uber Eats or uh, DoorDash. And so many times they have not gotten my order right. Like uh, for instance, I order a lot of sushi because I love sushi. And I know I'm a bastard for this, but I always get spicy mayo on the side. I can eat it without spicy mayo. I just I just love spicy mayo and I ask for a little cup of it so that I can I can dip the sushi in it But I never get the cup so I have to eat the sushi without it and it's it's still it's still really good But I like spicy mayo guys Okay, this last story is called my first encounter with a Karen. So I had my first wild encounter with a Karen today My girlfriend and I went to her job before her shift started to get a money order to pay rent We chilled in line for a moment and she joked with her co-workers and the people in front of us from behind us This middle-aged ass woman started loudly asking and pointing fingers saying who's fast food cop was that everyone just kind of stared at her as she repeatedly asked and tried to clarify herself saying who's fast food cop was that 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 someone threw away whose was that one of the girls behind the counter at customer service apparently begins to understand and says it was her cop and the lady responds well you need to throw your own stuff away stop being so lazy and using other people do it yourself and have a little respect for others and then she walks out of the building so from what I've gathered, girl A working customer service had a drink somewhere near girl B. Girl A asked her to bring it to her in which she possibly did or did not. I'm not sure, but the drink itself ended up being drunk or empty. So girl A told girl B to just throw it away for her. These were coworkers just asking a favor and helping each other out. And this lady got all crazy for no reason. The people in front of us asked her why the hell it mattered and to mind her own business. Everyone involved laughed and talked crap about the lady afterward. So yeah, that happened. Aha, uh -huh, I got it. Like clockwork. Lots of good things working together like clockwork from the first post. <laughs> like a clock. Anyway, uh, Karen mean bad jerk lady. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell to never miss an episode.